CO2 supplementation in a closed room is something we've started experimenting with very recently. We're in the first week of flower on our first CO2 grow. Luke and I thought it would be a good time to just open up the conversation about CO2 supplementation. Exciting topic, hey Luke? Yeah, no, it is. It's a very, very exciting topic. Um, it's something that we've been wanting to use and should have been using probably a little bit sooner, but uh, I'm glad to be on it right now. You know, upgrading the the room, optimizing the space, getting everything dialed in to to what we need to do. So adding CO2 is just like the cherry on top, you know? Yeah, I think uh, with the climate in South Africa, with relation to indoor cultivation, you know, you, it's, uh, you can't have... Uh big rooms anymore because you need to back everything up with uh with, with some kind of backup so efficiency and cost saving is going to be a big part of what we're going to be talking about throughout the course of 2023 and co2 is in my opinion a game changer but it's also it's quite scary it seems more scary than it is when you don't know anything about it yes no, that is definitely true. And I think there are some essentials that you do need to need to know about before um, implementing it or, or even looking looking at it, you know. I also think you need to have some experience growing without it first uh, 100%. as well, you know, because it, uh, it is something else. Um, you are giving an extra supplement for further synthesis, which we'll probably dive into a little bit later. But, you know, there are certain things that you do have to adjust in order to to make it work properly. So Luke, what are you using to monitor and control the CO2 levels in your indoor grow space? Give me a brief breakdown of what's happened to the ventilation systems and how you are monitoring and controlling. Okay, cool. So uh, to monitor and control CO2, obviously you you can make use of various monitoring equipment. Uh, we are making use of the Trollmaster Hydro X, uh, which has a CO2 component uh, an attachment with it that then monitors your CO2 levels. You obviously need to um, calibrate the unit before making use of it. But once it's calibrated and you've got your added CO2 in, it monitors your levels and gives you accurate readings, uh, live readings on the app. Uh, and I can also monitor and change things remotely as well, which, uh, uh, you know, is a big, big bonus. So those are the type of things that you, that you use. And in terms of ventilation, um, so while you're implementing CO2, you don't want a fresh, uh, you know, a fresh intake and uh, uh, old air exit constantly going. Um, you're just going to be wasting and pushing CO2 out of your environment. So there, it's it's better to go sort of more closed loop. So making use of air conditioners, dehumidifiers, oscillating fans to uh, keep your environmentals in check. And then while adding the CO2, and then obviously when the lights go off, there's no photosynthesis, so CO2 is not needed. And our device has a shutoff time that when lights are off, it doesn't pump CO2 into the room. And that is when I program my fans to then do the exchange. But where exactly is the CO2 coming from? It comes from a CO2 canister. Yeah, so you have to buy a CO2 canister uh, that goes with it. Uh, there's a regulator that needs to be set up as well. Uh, and then obviously a feeding tube that uh, the most common method I think is attaching that feeding tube onto an oscillating fan that then blows uh, around the room and blows the CO2 for your for your plants to feed off of. Okay, interesting. So yeah, lots of uh, lots of cool gear involved here, guys. Uh, but uh, Luke, tell me a little bit about uh, so, so so just also as a as a as a quick note before we carry on, we saw on on a graph. Uh, so the native CO2 is uh, about around 300 to 400 ppm in the, in the air, and that's what it was in the room. And then uh, we introduced the CO2, and it's now sitting at 900 for the current stage, which we at and our current lighting. So very, very interesting. We've basically doubled it. But what exactly has this doubling done? Well, what is uh, CO2 doing for, what is supplementing CO2 doing for the plants physically? So CO2 is essential for photosynthesis, which is obviously the process of which uh, plants convert light energy into chemical energy uh, used to grow. Uh, so increasing the CO2 levels boosts the plant growth uh, and can more often than not lead to yield increases uh, at the rate of obviously photosynthesis. And that also could essentially reduce uh, flowering times as well. However, there is obviously a limit to how much CO2 that you can be using that the, the plant can use itself. It's 
you know, the no use and, and could have a negative effect going beyond those limits. So taking into consideration lighting, et cetera, et cetera, um, is essential. Yeah. So what are some of the optimal uh, CO2 levels in the grow room? Currently so for ours, uh, you know, our lighting is is putting out between, I would say, 1,000 PPFD to 1,200 PPFD. Uh, currently hanging at 30 centimeters. So there I would match my CO2 levels, my input CO2 levels with my PPFD readings of, of what I'm getting across my canopy. Okay, excellent. And uh, now let's let's touch on a point I think everyone's wondering about. Uh, there are obviously specific risks uh, or certain risks involved uh, with relation to supplementing CO2. Tell me a little bit about the, the, the risks and uh, also why having proper testing equipment is important to mitigate those to mitigate those risks yeah look co2 is is obviously dangerous to uh, us as humans so we need oxygen to breathe and co2 <laughs> you know will completely uh completely deplete that and and uh, kill us so obviously your environmentals and your testing equipment and what you've got running needs to be good uh, i always also think that it uh, is good to have a backup so more than two monitors, uh, maybe of different devices reading, and then also making sure that your solenoid valves and your 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 your, your, your CO two regulator is of a good quality as well. That is essential. Make sure that you're buying a good quality regulator, uh, and that you also seal it up properly. You know, using your seals and grommets, and making sure that you um, tighten up nicely on all the valves that you need to, that there's no leakages. Um, but, you know, I think for a lot of the amount of input that us as home growers might be doing into our spaces, the CO2 might not be as high of a risk um, in terms of the levels. Uh, 1,200 might make you a little bit tired and, and drowsy, but, you know, it's good practice to always, when you're going to enter into the room, switch your fans on, switch your CO2 uh, off if you can close your your regulator and just do your work but then obviously it's essential to make sure that you remember to switch it back on afterwards <laughs> yeah not too many uh, bongs that like you forget <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly exactly okay um, so but yeah there, there are risks but uh, just be be safe do your research beforehand and practice uh, safe safe practices and you should be should be good yeah i think as with anything you know if you if you careful you buy the correct components and you and you do your research it will be it will be successful but all of this seems like quite a lot why, why would why would we do it what are we going to like i said at the start you know are we going to see those um th that efficiency go up are we going to save money over time and increase yields uh, using CO2? Yes, I definitely think so. Um, you know, running the, the, the system at full capacity also, um, you know, ourselves being fortunate enough to have taken it off, off grid completely. So, uh, you know, it's, everything is operating off, off of solar energy. So it's all compounding. At the end of the day, our, our veg times, you know, are, are really short. Our flowering times can now be short and our yields can be bigger. So, uh, in terms of energy costs and everything and the increase of efficiency in an indoor space, it's uh, it's definitely uh, something that I can give a two thumbs up for. <laughs> and in closing, Luke, uh, you're growing uh, Platinum Gorilla number three. It's something you've worked on. We, we've grown many, many, many times. First time with CO2 in day three or so of flower, uh, been probably a couple, you know, uh, maybe a week since CO2 has gone in. What are you, are you seeing a difference in growth uh, currently? Uh, you know, has it been noticeable or or not? Definitely noticeable. Um, and I've also noticed that, you know, I've got to be a little bit heavier on my, my EC, my input EC going into the feeding system, into the medium. Um, but, you know, keeping the VPD in check, you can, you can see almost within hours the, the growth that's happening from it. So it definitely has worked uh, and it definitely is working. And I'm very, very excited to see, uh, you know, the results, especially in a couple of weeks, once we really start seeing those buds forming. Um, 
yeah i think we're i think we're in for for something special so as you guys can see i don't think we've ever been so amped with uh run this run is going to be amazing we're going to bring content we're going to create a whole bunch related to what we're currently doing we're trying to push the our own knowledge base so that we can educate more uh luke's really been putting in the the the, the graft into into learning and uh, also uh, designing so guys if you want to do co2 or if you're interested in in pushing yourself further definitely hit us up uh, and as always remember to like and subscribe until next time guys peace, peace.